We start with what's happening in Washington, because when President-elect Joe Biden is sworn into office on January 20th, President Trump will not be there. That would make him the first president to skip his successor's inauguration since 1869. Trump tweeted today, quote, to all those who have asked, I will not be going to the inauguration. Pretty clear. On Thursday, Trump admitted for the first time publicly that a new administration would be taking over. I am outraged by the violence, lawlessness, and mayhem. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defiled the seat of American democracy. To those who engaged in the acts of violence and destruction, you do not represent our country. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. We have just been through an intense election, and emotions are high. But now, tempers must be cooled and calm restored. A new administration will be inaugurated on January 20th. My focus now turns to ensuring a smooth, orderly, and seamless transition of power. This moment calls for healing and reconciliation. I know you are disappointed, but I also want you to know that our incredible journey is only just beginning. The video message, a huge change in tone, also follows a wave of re resignations from his administration, as well as calls from top congressional Democrats for Trump's removal from office over his role in inciting the mob attack on the U.S. Capitol this week. So for more on all of this, let's bring in Bloomberg government reporter Emily Wilkins. Emily, before we get to the inauguration and the drama there, let's get an update on the impeachment talk. Just how feasible are the Democrats' plan? So at this point, um, Speaker Nancy Pelosi just spent about three hours on a call with House Democrats talking over impeachment, options, hearing complaints, hearing concerns. We know at this point that more than 130 House Democrats have signed on to a resolution to impeach Trump for a second time. We are hearing discussion that a vote on that will be held early next week. House members will be called back to Washington. Of course, after that vote is taken and Democrats do, it seems like they might have the votes they need to pass it. Uh, but even if they do, it then becomes a question of what next. Usually the process would move to the Senate. But remember, we've got less than two weeks left at this point before Biden is sworn in and, and Trump is out. And so there might not really be time for the Senate to do much. And it doesn't really sound like there's the appetite either to do another trial like we saw at this time last year. Right. But as the Senate has proved, it can get things done incredibly quickly. Witness the last Supreme Court nomination uh, process. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.